Avenue, one and a half mile between each temple. Over here are the pylons of Ramses II and the statues of Ramses II too. Two sitting and four standing. And my personal favorite, the two grand obelisks of Luxor. The obelisk represents Do you remember the seeing the two obelisks when we were in the future? When we were in the future, one of the obelisks was in Paris, France. This is way before they moved the obelisk. Egyptian art will affect the way that people build in the future. The Washington Monument is based on the shape of an obelisk. Also, people use columns as the Egyptians did. What do the hieroglyphs on the pylon say? When I researched Luxor, I found that the hieroglyphics seem to be telling the story of the Battle of Kadesh in 1274 BC. Supposedly, Ramses II defeated the Hittites single-handedly. It was actually a tie. Typical of Ramses II, always boasting and bragging. All sort of like Saddam Hussein, placing his statues all across Iraq. We're now in the Parasail Courtyard. We shouldn't go any further. Only priests can, except for during some ceremonies. But if things are as they say, then we must go on. We are now entering the colony. It has 14 tall open bed columns and two colossal statues of Ramses II with his wife at his legs and his enemies at his feet. And now we're in the court of Amenhofes, surrounded by 32 papyrus bud columns. Here is the entrance to the Hypostale Hall, but I forbid you to enter. Behind this hall, the secret rituals take place, and no matter how important your mission may be, they must remain a secret. Follow me back to Karnak so we can finish our tour. I believe this is one of the largest religious complexes in the world. Tutmosis III constructed the enclosure in two pylons. The shape of a pylon represents the hill that the sun rises behind. We just passed the first and second pylons and are now in the Hypostale Hall. Did you know you can fit Notre Dame inside of here? Isn't that amazing? It's 102 meters by 53 meters. They are bordered by cholesterol windows 23 meters up. These windows are similar to the ones in churches in the future. The remaining papyrus bud columns are only 15 meters high. Did you know Ramses II has his, had his cartouche inscribed all over the walls? The sacred bark is stored here. It is a wonder of the world. Look at his works, ye mighty, and beware. We are now at the third pylon. To your right is the court of Cachette. If you continue, you will pass four pylons and arrive at the Avenue of Sphinxes. Ahead of us are three more pylons and the courtyard of the Middle Kingdom. Now here's the Hall of Feasts. On the other side of these walls is a sacred lake. Other temples in Karnak include the Temple of Khanmun, the Temple of Opet, the Temple of Ta, and the Eastern Temple. Across the Nile are mortuary temples in a valley where the kings are buried. Wait, I think I know what's missing. Let's head back to the Tartarus of Paris, France. We need to get the obelisk back. Come on!
picture in the Washington Monument. No wonder the hieroglyphics were gone. Yes, finally we can go home. I need my battery recharged. What's wrong, Master? I just got a message. We have to save Mr. Cadbury from the Aztecs. They kidnapped him and took him back in time to teach them how to make cocoa. Lalak, the sun god, instructs that I, Clatoxil, high priest of sacrifice, shall impart to the true servants of Yataxa the sacred and honored skill of preparing cocoa. Is that not so, Tonilla? Yes, the god Quetzalcoatl came unto us from paradise upon the morning star, bringing with him the bitter water of Theobroma. Only those with the wisdom to drink it shall be granted the wisdom it imparts. How then shall a novice begin to drink from the cocoa bean? The beans must be taken and placed with ground sugar cane in a container of rainwater. Now let us praise Cloloch for granting us the gift of rain. Ah, and then it is left in the shade of a dwelling for seven days and seven nights. To what end does the High Priest of Knowledge make this recommendation? In order that the sublime and blessed oils and bitters and sweetnesses of the beans ferment. Ah! Once this has happened, the beans must be laid under the gaze of the sun god for no fewer than seven days to drive away the water. As Clalock drove away he who has fallen. The beans must then be placed on a blade and held over flame until the husks become blackened and quickly ground to a fine powder between flat rocks. What then becomes of the powder, Tanila? Tell so all may share in the wisdom and goodness imbued by the true spirit of Yataxa. The powder is mixed with more rainwater and crushed beetles. Ah, the red of the creature makes cocoa to the eye as blood. And thickened with crushed corn, vanilla and chilies of the severest heat. That is indeed a drink, Tonilla, to usher in manhood, bind the spirits of lovers, and nourish those most honoured as perfect sacrifice to our gods. Let us make to our temple and prepare a draft in honour of our vanquishing of the false Yataxa. Clamach be praised. So be it.